It started innocently enough, like most things do. I swiped right, she swiped right, and the chatting began. Her name was Eliza, and from our first conversation, I could tell she was different. The first thing she asked wasn't about my job or where I was from, but if I believed in the supernatural. It was odd, sure, but intriguing nonetheless. We moved quickly from Tinder to texting, and that's when things began to feel off. Her texts would come at odd hours of the night, often just past midnight. One night, as a storm lashed against my windows, my phone lit up with her message, Do you like ghost stories, Daniel? It was 12.03 AM. Curious, I replied that I did, and what followed chilled me to the bone. She told me a story about a woman who used dating apps to summon spirits. She said the woman would invite unsuspecting men to her house, which was said to be haunted by her ancestors. The spirits, she explained, fed off the energy of the living. I tried to laugh it off, typing a nervous, that's creepy. But her next message stopped me cold. It's not just a story, Daniel. I want you to come over. Despite every instinct screaming that it was a bad idea, curiosity got the better of me. We arranged to meet the following night at her place, an old Victorian on the outskirts of town. As I drove up the winding path to her house, fog rolled in, thick and suffocating, cloaking everything in a ghostly white. The house loomed ominously as I approached. Its towering silhouette, punctuated by jagged spires, seemed to pierce the fog. The door creaked open before I could knock, revealing Eliza standing in the dim light. Her smile was unsettlingly wide. I'm so glad you could make it, she said her voice a haunting melody. Inside, the house was a labyrinth of shadows and whispers. Eliza led me through a series of rooms, each more bizarre and disturbing than the last. Old portraits stared down at us, their eyes seeming to follow every move. Eliza's voice echoed off the walls as she recounted the history of her family, their ties to the occult, and their tragic ends. We finally stopped in a small, dusty library. The air was thick with the scent of old books and mildew. Eliza reached for an ancient tome on a high shelf, her fingers tracing the spine with a reverence that made my skin crawl. This was my great-grandmother's, she murmured, opening the book to a page marked with a strange, crimson bookmark. The words were in a language I didn't recognize, filled with harsh, jagged letters that twisted across the page. Eliza began to read aloud, her voice low and hypnotic. The candles flickered as if in response to her words, casting dancing shadows across the walls. I felt a chill run down my spine, a feeling of dread overwhelming me. As she read, the temperature in the room dropped sharply. I could see my breath in the air, and my heart raced with a mix of fear and fascination. Shadows seemed to move just beyond the edge of the candlelight, coalescing into forms that were almost human. Suddenly, there was a loud crash from somewhere deep in the house. Eliza stopped reading and looked up, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and excitement. They're here, she whispered, grabbing my arm with a cold, urgent grip. We left the library, heading toward the source of the noise. The corridor seemed to stretch and distort as we walked, the house groaning under the weight of its own history. We reached a heavy wooden door at the end of a long hallway. 
Eliza paused, her hand on the doorknob, and turned to me with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Ready to meet my ancestors? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Before I could answer, she pushed the door open. What I saw inside was beyond comprehension, a tableau of horror that froze me in place. The room beyond the door was shrouded in darkness, thick as velvet. A single dim light bulb swung gently from the ceiling, casting eerie, shifting shadows across the walls. I squinted, trying to make sense of the figures I could barely discern. They were statues, or so they seemed, life-sized and too lifelike, arranged in a circle around a worn, circular rug. Their faces were contorted in expressions of agony and terror, as if frozen in the midst of some unspeakable event. Eliza stepped into the room ahead of me, her footsteps echoing oddly on the wooden floor. These are not just statues, she said, her voice a haunting whisper that seemed to bounce off the cold walls. They are my family, caught between worlds. They need energy to continue their journey or to finally rest. I followed her in, my heart pounding in my chest, each beat echoing my mounting dread. The air was cold, colder than any room had a right to be, and I felt a chill seep into my bones. The light from the bulb cast macabre patterns on the floor, and as I watched, the shadows appeared to writhe and twist, as if alive. What? What happened to them? I managed to ask, my voice quivering with fear. Eliza paused, her back still turned to me. A curse, she replied softly. A powerful, ancient curse that trapped them here. They tried to harness something they shouldn't have, something from beyond the veil. And it destroyed them binding their souls to these shells. Her story was fantastical, unbelievable, and yet everything about the night, about Eliza and this horrifying place, made me believe her. I swallowed hard, trying to clear the lump that had formed in my throat. And you, you can see them? Communicate with them? Yes, she said turning to face me. Her eyes seemed darker now, hollows of shadow that sucked in the dim light. I can. And tonight, with your help, I'm going to free them. They need fresh energy, energy from the living. The way she said living sent a shiver down my spine. What do you need me to do? I asked though part of me screamed to run, to escape this nightmare. Just stand in the center, she instructed, pointing to a spot on the rug that seemed to undulate slightly in the low light. Don't worry, it won't hurt. You'll barely feel a thing. Every instinct told me to flee, but my feet moved of their own accord, carrying me towards the center of the circle. As I stepped onto the rug, a sudden rush of air enveloped me, cold and damp like a breath from the grave. The statues seemed to lean closer, their stone eyes wide and pleading. Eliza began to chant, her voice rising and falling in a cadence that made my head spin. The light bulb flickered rapidly, strobing between light and dark, and I felt the energy in the room shift a tangible presence that wrapped around me like a second skin. The edges of my vision began to blur, the figures around me merging into a swirling, indistinct mass. Suddenly, a sharp, piercing scream cut through the chanting. It wasn't Eliza. The sound was primal, a cry of anguish and fury that seemed to come from the walls themselves. 
the statues were moving, their stone limbs cracking and groaning as they reached towards me. Faces contorted in pain and anger, they were no longer just statues but something alive, something tormented. Eliza's chanting grew louder, more urgent. Hold on, just a little longer, she shouted over the noise, her face a mask of concentration and fear. The room spun, the screams and the chanting blending into a cacophony that filled my ears with dread. I felt energy draining from me, pulled away by the grasping hands of the statues, their fingers cold as death itself. My legs buckled, my strength waning as the room grew darker, the light bulb finally giving out with a pop, plunging us into darkness. In the blackness, I could feel them all around me, hear their whispers in my ear, begging, pleading, demanding. My breaths came in short, sharp gasps, my chest tight with panic. Eliza! I cried out, but my voice was swallowed by the darkness, lost among the legion of voices that now filled the room. The floor beneath me felt like it was moving, undulating like the surface of a stormy sea. I was falling, or maybe floating, the distinction lost in the terror of the moment. Just when I thought I would pass out from fear, a hand grabbed mine, gripping it with a desperation that matched my own. It's working, Eliza's voice cut through the darkness, close to my ear. Just a bit more, hold on. But before I could respond, a new sound rose above the rest, a deep, rumbling growl that vibrated through the floor and into my bones. Something else was here with us, something ancient and malevolent, awakened by our ritual. The air grew even colder, and I felt a presence looming over us, its malice a palpable force that threatened to consume everything. The ground shook, the statues screamed, and Eliza chanted on, her voice now tinged with panic. The darkness was complete, a void where not even fear could escape. And as I stood there, on the brink of an abyss I could neither see nor understand, I realized that whatever we had summoned was far beyond our control, far beyond our comprehension. And it was just beginning to wake. In the palpable darkness, the presence grew encompassing everything. My senses were overloaded, fear saturating every nerve as Eliza's chanting became a desperate plea. The growl intensified, a sound so primeval and terrifying that it seemed to echo from the depths of the earth itself. I could barely stand, my knees weak, my body trembling uncontrollably. Eliza, we need to stop. I shouted, my voice barely a whisper against the roaring din that filled the room. But she didn't seem to hear, or couldn't stop, her words spilling out faster, more frantic than before. The air around us crackled with energy, a static charge that raised the hairs on my arms and neck. The darkness wasn't just absence of light anymore, it felt alive, hungry. I strained my eyes, trying to see, but there was nothing except the endless black and the sensation of being watched by countless unseen eyes. Suddenly, a cold gust swept through the room, and the candles flickered back to life with a stuttering urgency. The light revealed a horrifying sight, the statues had moved closer, their faces inches from my own their expressions twisted in eternal screams of horror. I recoiled, stumbling back, but found myself encircled by them, trapped. Eliza's voice rose to a crescendo, her words slicing through the tumult. By the ancient bond, I command thee, she cried out. The statues began to shudder, cracks appearing on their surfaces as if they were about to shatter. 
the air vibrated with the power of her words, the ground beneath us rumbling in response. The growl morphed into a cacophony of voices, old and young, male and female, all merged into one monstrous sound. It was as if the very walls of the house were protesting, trying to expel the horror that had invaded. The statues were now moving, their stone limbs grinding against each other, reaching out to us with fingers that seemed all too real. I need more power. Eliza screamed, turning towards me, her eyes wild with fear and determination. Hold on, just a little longer. We are almost there. But it was too much. The room spun, and I felt myself slipping, my consciousness fading as the dark energy surged around us. Just as I thought I would pass out, a sharp, piercing light burst through the room. It cut through the darkness like a blade, searing my eyes after such prolonged gloom. Through the blinding light, I saw them, the figures that had been trapped within the statues. They were ethereal now, glowing faintly, their faces etched with sorrow and relief. They reached out to us, their hands passing through the air, touching nothing and everything all at once. The veil is thinning, Eliza gasped, her voice a mix of awe and terror. They can pass through. But the portal, it's unstable. It needs to be closed. The figures, their forms flickering like flames, moved towards the center of the room where the rug lay. They seemed drawn to it, or perhaps they were finally being released, their bonds to this earthly plane dissolving. As they converged on the spot, the air grew warmer, the oppressive chill dissipating. But the rumbling growl did not cease. Instead, it grew louder, more insistent. Something else was coming through the veil, something that had been waiting for its chance to break into our world. The ground shook, the walls trembled, and I knew that whatever it was, it was vast, powerful, and malevolent. We have to close it now. Eliza shouted, pulling me towards her. Help me, please. Her hands were icy as she took mine, guiding them to form symbols in the air, her lips moving in silent incantation. The light grew even more intense, blinding, while the growl turned into a roar that seemed to shake the very foundation of the house. The ethereal figures looked back at us, their eyes sad yet grateful before they faded completely, leaving behind a silence that was abruptly shattered by the roar of something else stepping through the threshold. As the light began to dim, I saw it, a form too terrible to fully comprehend, shadows within shadows, as like burning coals. It was here, brought forth by the ritual, by our actions. Eliza and I stood, hands clasped, the last line of defense against this ancient darkness. The creature roared again, a sound that vibrated through my bones, and as it stepped forward, the house groaned under its weight. We were running out of time, the portal needed to be closed, but the energy required was immense. Eliza looked at me, desperation written across her face. We need more power, or all is lost, she cried out over the noise. The creature advanced, each step a thunderclap, its intent clear and deadly. I nodded, knowing the risk, knowing what it might cost. Together, we prepared to make one final stand, to seal the portal and banish the darkness. The air crackled with energy the shadows danced, and the battle for our souls, for the very fabric of our reality, was about to begin. As the creature loomed closer, 
its form growing ever more terrifying, the air thickened with the scent of ozone and fear. Its eyes, burning like coal, fixed upon us with a malevolence that seemed to strip the very warmth from my bones. Eliza's grip tightened on my hands, her voice a steady chant that filled the room with power and defiance. We need to focus, concentrate on the seal, she shouted over the creature's roar. I nodded, swallowing the lump of fear in my throat, and closed my eyes, focusing all my mental energy on the task at hand. Around us, the room vibrated, the walls themselves seeming to pulsate with energy as if the house was alive, responding to our desperate fight. The creature advanced, each step causing the floorboards to creak and moan under its weight. The air was electric, sparking with the raw energy of the portal that remained dangerously open. Visualize the door closing, Eliza instructed, her voice calm amidst the chaos. Imagine it sealing, locking this horror away from our world. I did as she said, picturing a massive, iron door slamming shut on the swirling vortex that the room had become. In my mind's eye, the door was heavy, impenetrable, bound by chains and locks infused with ancient magic. As we focused, the creature let out a bellow that shook the room, a sound so powerful it threatened to shatter my concentration. But I held on clinging to the image of the door, feeling it become reality in the space before us. Suddenly, the light in the room intensified, blinding in its brilliance. The creature halted, its form wavering as if caught in a powerful storm, struggling against the light that seemed to burn it. It screamed, a sound that was both a roar and a wail, full of pain and rage. The door is closing. Eliza exclaimed, her voice filled with a mix of triumph and relief. Keep focusing. I poured every ounce of my will into the visualization, the door inching closer to being sealed. The creature thrashed, its shadowy limbs striking out at the encroaching light, but it was weakening, the brightness overwhelming its darkness. With a final, monumental effort, the door slammed shut in my mind, the sound echoing in the physical room as if it were real. A silence fell, sudden and complete, the only sound the heavy breathing of Eliza and myself, our hands still clasped together. We opened our eyes. The creature was gone. The room was intact though every surface seemed to bear the marks of the battle. The air was clear, the earlier electric charge dissipated, replaced by a palpable sense of peace. We did it, Eliza breathed, her eyes wide with a mix of exhaustion and disbelief. We actually did it. I nodded, feeling a wave of fatigue wash over me now that the adrenaline was fading. But at what cost? I wondered aloud, looking around at the scarred room. Eliza followed my gaze, then smiled weakly. A necessary price for keeping that thing out of our world. We've protected not just ourselves, but potentially many others. As we left the room, the house seemed to sigh, a sound of settling in relief as if it too had been holding its breath, awaiting the outcome of our endeavor. Outside, the dawn was breaking, the first light of the morning casting a golden glow that made the horrors of the night seem like a distant nightmare. Yet the experience would stay with me, a haunting reminder of the thin veil between our world and the darkness that lurks just beyond. Eliza and I parted ways, a mutual understanding between us that some bonds, forged in the heat of battle, were meant to be acknowledged silently. 
As I drove away from the house, the sun rising higher in the sky, I felt a change within myself. I had faced the unknown, the unimaginable, and had come out alive. The fear that had once gripped me was now replaced by a newfound resolve. Whatever darkness might come, I was ready to face it, armed with the knowledge that even the deepest shadows can be overcome with light. And as the house faded from view in my rearview mirror, a final thought crossed my mind in the battle between light and darkness. Sometimes the brightest light comes from within, 